Hope you're doing well today. It is December 2nd. Our reading today is from the book of Acts. We're looking in Acts chapter 20 and chapter 21. And within these chapters, we see the account there at the bottom. And this, where this is, this is right after the riot at Ephesus. After the uproar had ceased, that's Ephesus. Okay, so you have the account of Eutychus. Then you have Paul calling for the Ephesian elders and speaking to them, warning them, and various things. And then praying together as, as well. They all wept freely as Paul knelt down and prayed with them all. Chapter 21, Paul's on his way towards Jerusalem. And of course, you have prophecies that are being going to be made about that as Paul is arrested in the temple. And then Paul's speaking to the people. Let's back up, though. I want to just look at one verse today. I want to look in Acts chapter 20. And the verse I want to look at is around verse... Verse... Let's see. Verse 13. I'll tell you what. Verse 12. Just see where... This is right after Eutychus. And they brought the young man in alive. And they were not a little comforted. Okay, then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Assos, there attending to take Paul on board, for so he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Assos, we took him on board and came to Mytilene. Or, have, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing any of those correctly. Okay, just, I, I, just in reading that, I thought it was, something struck me. And I tell you what, let's switch over to the New American Standard, because the verse I want to key in on, is verse 13. New American Standard puts it this way. But we went ahead to the ship and set sail for Assos, intending from there to take Paul on board, for that was what he had, he had arranged, intending himself to go by land. And the question is, why did Paul do that? Why did Paul not accompany his companions on the ship? Why... Why did he want to want to go by land and meet them in this in this place? And I was just thinking about the idea of th this idea. Why would he? Why would he do this? And of course, we frankly we don't know. We don't know. So maybe you think it's useless to think about. But why would Paul want to go by land? Um, Matthew Henry. In his commentary, he references an ancient writer who says this path, this, this, this journey that Paul's taking, that it was known for being extremely hard, extremely harsh. This is not just a, a walk in the woods as it is. So why would Paul choose that path? Well, one reason may be that he may have, there may have been other work to do. And so he wants them to go on, but he's going to go by foot. And it's, there may be other work to do, and that's okay. That's okay. And what this goes to is, it's, and let me just go ahead and mention the second point. It would also be okay if he just wanted to be alone. You know, with all the things happened that at Ephesus, it would be okay if he just, wanted to be alone. You know, there are times where, for example, husbands and wives were to part for a season to give themselves to fasting and prayer. It's okay to be alone. There were times where Jesus would go off by himself to pray alone. When we when it talks about prayer, it says go into your, your room and to your closet and shut the door and be alone with your father. It's okay to be alone. We don't always have to be surrounded by people. And that's the thing. There, there may have been work to do. There may have been work to do. He may have known, he may have known about people, or he may have known of people who had not heard the God. Whatever the case, there may have been work to do. It's okay. And he's and he I, I want to take this journey. There may have been work to do. He may have just wanted to be alone. So he could spend time in prayer, so he could spend time in whatever the case. It may have been that he was the only one willing to take this journey. 
like I said, it, it was a difficult journey, according to writers. And you think about a person's choices in life. And, and you think about, for example, marriage. Why did Paul never marry? I think a lot of people would have said, Paul, you know, your life would be he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Paul wrote, the Holy Spirit through Paul wrote a good bit about marriage. And it's, I, it would be easy to say, well, why, why are you choosing the life of the celibate? Now, I think Paul had his reasons. And, and he, in thinking about that, some of those reasons, as we think about self-denial, not everybody is willing to accept that concerning marriage. Remember what Jesus says. There are eunuchs for the kingdom's sake. There are, right? That passage. Uh, not all are willing to accept what Paul and Barnabas accepted. Not, not marrying. And my point is that that was, it was, a, it would, it was a hard journey. It was a hard life. And maybe Paul was the only one willing to go on that journey where the others wanted to go by. I don't know. But it's just, it seems like so, somewhat of an odd passage. You might also think about, and I was just thinking, I was just wondering, why did Paul do this? And another option is, you just look at the things that had happened. There, there was an uproar in Greece. Verse 3, and I want, I want you to key in on this one specifically, because he's with, let's put it this way, verse, verse 4, he was accompanied by these individuals. But look at verse 3, and there he spent three months, and when a plot was formed against him by the Jews. The Judaizers who were causing so many issues... I I wonder why would why Paul would do this. Another option is is to protect his friends. It would be very easy. I don't I mean I don't know how <laughs> I don't know how things were back then, but for example today. You know, when things happen, you can check a flight manifest. You can check check a boat manifest and you can find out who's on that boat and you can be there waiting for them when they get off. The authorities can. You don't think they had manifests back then? And I know who who these folks are. I know who was at the center of a lot of these issues. And while it's easy to say Jesus, they were plotting against Paul. And so I wonder another option. Like I said, I don't know. All I know is it looks like the rest of them went by ship and Paul chose, he'd given orders, he was going to go to the same place, but he's going to go there by foot. I wonder if he wasn't protecting his friends. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to be alone. That's okay. Maybe there was other work to do. That's okay, too. Maybe he was the only one willing to go. That's okay, too. Maybe he was wanting to protect them. Whatever it is, that's okay. That's okay. Um. To think about it, you, you, you don't know. We, we don't know. And there's a lot of things we don't know. So perhaps what folks should do is not jump to conclusions. It would be real easy to say, oh, well, Paul's not coming with us. That means he doesn't love us. He doesn't like us. He doesn't want to spend time with us. You don't, we don't know. I think he did love them. I think he did like them. They were his companions. But it's easy to jump to conclusions and to start evil surmising. Paul had his reasons, whatever they were, and that's okay. That's okay. He went by foot. Appreciate you. As we think about these things, hope it's beneficial for you. Hope you have a good day. Hope you join us for our next look into God's Word.